So there's about you know, 10, 12, 15 of us, uh, depending as to how you count the size of the funds, the activity, size of the portfolio, that would qualify as super angels. However, we're really venture capitalists because we manage other people's money. The issue is that micro VC, which is the best definition of what we do, isn't that great or isn't sexy. And so super <laughs> angel, enough, you know, yeah. the big flapping wings is something that people prefer. So we're super angels. Whether you call him a super angel or micro VC, Jeff Clavier of SoftTech VC is prolific with 81 investments, including exits in Mint, Truvio, and most recently Tapulous. We asked him for his pulse on the funding market. Today's clearly a seller's market. That's a good news for entrepreneurs where they can get funded pretty quickly uh, based on interesting you know, teams, products, and markets that they address. The question is always, um, should what sort of trade-off should they make between the experience of the team that is trying to, um, to fund them and the sort of longer track record and, and maybe position in the market that um, some of us could, um, could offer. Yeah, you said it's a seller's market, so yeah. you're implying that valuations are pretty high right now. So how do you navigate that? How do you find Valuations are deals? higher. I wouldn't say, <laughs> you know, it's, it's always sort of all relative. Um, yeah. in, my, in my view, um, what we, uh, the early stage investors, have to find is the right balance between, you know, the, the stage at which we invest, the risk we take, and not trying to um, own too much of the company because if we own too much of the company then there's an issue for whoever tries to invest after us and so there's there's this fine balance this, this sort of um, number that is sort of the magical number we need to look at and try and get to when we discuss the financing and so that that's what that there's always a fair price that we're trying to establish some in some cases people have been able to get higher than those prices and have typically taken a um, a conservative positions towards prices saying, hey, I like what you're doing, but I think it's too expensive. And to be honest, my biggest blunder of all, as I've said many times, is to have passed on LinkedIn at 10 pre because I thought it was kind of too expensive and wasn't, you know, really growing uh, fast enough at that time. That was back in yeah. 2005. Last year, you passed on Foursquare, right? Was valuation a part of that? What was the reason you walked away then? So. It wasn't valuation at all. It was um, so I, I chatted with um, with Dennis uh, in July of of, um, of last year, and I like the concept. I like Dennis. Uh, he's very smart. Um, I like sort of the the gaming aspect that they were introducing to um, uh, sort of get users engaged and so on and so forth. I didn't see the long term retention that was sort of in in July, so I wasn't exactly clear as to what I wanted to do. Uh, let you know, went on vacation, came back. Foursquare was all the rage then, and there was sort of no way to get back in. So I sort of passed by omission. Um, I did pass on a few things, like um, another screw up of mine on the valuation was uh, was Twilio. Twilio is doing fantastically well. I just thought they were too expensive when um, I looked at funding them. We couldn't sort of settle on price. I said no, and it was a mistake. So for ten deals, hundred deals, two hundred deals, you pass on. For the right reason, there's always like two or three examples that you should not have said no to. You look at the space that you cover, consumer mm -hmm. internet, right? Are there slices within this market where you would just not touch? Like, for example, geolocation space. Is that a place that you don't want to go to right now because you see the valuations of Foursquare and all the other companies that are vying for that? for that market? So I think that geolocation is sort of an interesting enabling technology. So you have the pure plays, um, uh, Foursquare, Goala, and, um, and Buya, which have raised quite a bit of money at high valuations because they are the, the direct uh, players. But then there's a lot of things that you can do with geolocation, um, ancillary services, and, and one of my recent unannounced uh, investments is actually in that space where we, um, we aggregate all those uh, geolocation data and, and sort of use them in a very specific um, angle and, mm. and, and usage. Um, and in that case, it makes complete sense to actually just work with all those players. So there's there's a lot which can be done with geolocation. I'm a huge fan, for example, of Simple Geo, which I couldn't invest in because I was selling Mixer Labs to Twitter at the same time. <laughs> but it's a, it's a company which is really bi uh, building an infrastructure underneath all mm -hmm. those different players, which is also a fascinating play, and they've raised a lot of money. So I think th there are there are overplayed areas um, in consumer internet. In the grand scheme of things, even though Foursquare passed a really meaningful milestone, which is a million check in a day, um, you know, Facebook still hasn't made its move mm -hmm. yeah. in the in the geolocation space. And the day they have their own check-in application, 
Watch out. The, the well, you know, 500 yeah. million users, right? So it's a lot. Um, so I think it's still sort of a market which is in its infancy, and it's okay to build some aggregation, some vertical application. That's one of my bets. We'll see how, you know. Can you tell us the name of your bet? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, uh, but it's it was on TechCrunch, um, so it's uh, it's already out there. There's a lot of companies on TechCrunch. Yeah, I know it doesn't mean anything. But the, the point is that um, <laughs> when we invest, we look at the fundamentals that I mentioned, and we sort of say, hey, I'm not sure how it's going to play out, and we'll just work hard at, at trying to make stars aligned and and you know increase the um, the probability of success, but. It doesn't always work. So what is a slice of the market that you're most focused on right now that you think has the most potential, the most dollars of return? Um, the, the whole sort of, so it's a very broad market. It's mm -hmm. uh, B2B, B2C web services, which is where I'm spending most of my time. And you have uh, some investments in that arena already, right? 20, a good 20, yeah. And I'm just a fan of that market. You know, in this building just uh, above us, uh, there's even Bright. Even Bright is now sort of the leader in, in ticketing and they're just like doing really, really well. Um, another one is DN and Nexus, uh, which is actually in my building in Palo Alto, uh, which has just released their um, their infrastructure. They help uh, companies doing DNA sequencing with uh, DNA analysis in the, in the in the cloud, which costs a fortune to operate, and they will bring that cost down, you know, a hundredfold, a thousandfold. Mm -hmm. For the next company that you're targeting, what is that slice within the slice then? What is the slice within the slice? Because, yes. um, I mean, it's such a diverse field, even within the sector of consumer internet, right? That The next one is going to be monetization. monetization. It's actually helping uh, publishers to make more money on something that they do. Hmm. Can you elaborate on that? Nope. Beyond a wink? Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Okay. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you. Appreciate it.